Welcome to the video lecture of 19 SC PHYU301. We are discussing the first chapter complex numbers and this is the story so far. Complex numbers were invented in attempt to find out the roots of polynomials. We specifically dis discussed quadratic equations which are polynomials of second degree. The form is like this ax square plus bx plus c is equal to 0. In order to find out the roots of complex number we can use this equation x is equal to minus b plus or minus square root of b square minus 4ac divided by 2a. Whenever b square is less than 4ac the term in the square root which is b square minus 4ac is it becomes negative and therefore we what we have is a number which is real number which has a negative sign and which is under square root. For example, this square root of minus, let's suppose, minus 4 and mathematicians didn't know how to tackle these kind of number and therefore they defined another number i which is imaginary because such numbers cannot exist in real. We cannot have a number which when squared gives us the negative number and therefore this is called as the imaginary number. Now this minus 4 with this symbol i can be written like this. It, we can write it as minus 1 into 4 which is equal to square root of minus 1 into square root of 4 or it is now 2 into i where 2 is square root of 4 and minus square root of minus 1 is i and in this way complex numbers came into picture. Now this lecture is a bit of digression from the topic of complex numbers. What we will do is we will discuss a problem from electrodynamics which has nothing to do with complex numbers directly. But since we are discussing quadratic equations, it is good idea to see how quadratic equa equations can emerge automatically when we discuss physical problems. So this is the problem. You can pause this video and read the problem statement carefully. This problem is taken from the legendary textbook by Halliday and Resnick. Now in next slides, we will go through the problem once again, sentence by sentence, trying to understand what is given and what is to be solved, what is to be found out. So this is first sentence which says that there are two identical spheres and you can see these two identical spheres here. This is the first sphere and this is the second sphere and they are now identical and conducting at the same times and they are attracting each other with this force 0 0.108 Newton and their center to center distance is also given which is 50 centimeter which I have already converted to meters here since we, are, we will be using SI unit. The next sentence is the spheres are then connected by thin conducting wire. We will discuss in detail later why this particular term thin is important. But these spheres are then con connected by a thin conducting wire and something happens so that they now start repelling each other. So this sentence says that once the wire is removed, the two spheres they start repelling each other with this force. And the question is, what was the initial charges before the spheres were connected by the thin wire? Thin wire? To solve any physics problem, the first thing that you have to do is write the problem in terms of mathematical equations so that those equations then can be manipulated to find out the answer and calling that as mathematical modeling. So we will read the problem once again but now we will try to write down the equations which can help us to solve the problem. So this is the first sentence once again. These are the two identical spheres. Now why is it required that the spheres are identical? We will answer that question later. So these are the two identical spheres. Their distance is given and f is also given. Suppose that the first sphere has charge say q1 and the second sphere is with charge q2. Now please pause video here and try to think about what are the conditions on q1 and q2. q1 and q2 should have opposite signs 
if one is positive the other one should be negative and then only the two spheres will attract each other if both charges were positive or if both charges were negative the spheres would repel each other but here the force is attracting and that means q1 or q2 is negative and the other one is positive now we won't worry much about the signs of the charges we will simply write down the mathematical equations and mathematics will take care, will take care of the uh, charges so here they are attracting each other and the rule that i have to apply to write down the equation is coulomb's law which says that force of attraction between two charges is given by 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 q1 into q2 divided by r square in this case q1 and q2 are the two charges and r is equal to 0 0.5 meter which is point to point distance which is center to center distance between the two spheres now we can rearrange this equation this is f1 i'm sorry so we will re rearrange this equation and we'll write q1 into q2 is equal to 4 pi epsilon 0 f1 into r square this is the first equation that we will need now you if you look at the equation carefully on left hand side we have written the terms which are unknown and on the right hand side we have the terms which are known here we will consider f1 to be equal to minus 0 0.108 newton because that minus sign here suggest this minus sign suggests that the force is attractive force in this equation now you can plug in all the values because 4 pi epsilon it's simply a constant f1 is known and r is also known so you can calculate what is the right hand side but we won't do it here we will keep the term as it is and then in the end when we have equation to find out the charges we will plug in plug in the values let's consider the second sentence the two spheres now are connected by a thin conducting wire this this is important that the wire is conducting and something happens and therefore they start repelling each other so what happens here what we know is one of them has charge q1 the second one has charge q2 and q1 and q2 are not same in fact they are opposite in sign now any sphere any conducting sphere when it has charge q1 then potential on the surface of that sphere is given by 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 charge on the sphere which is q1 in this case divided by r square where r is the radius of the sphere the potential here we are writing in SI units and it is in reference with infinity. So as compared to infinity, the potential on the surface of the sphere is given by this equation. Similarly, we can write down the equation V for second sphere V2 is 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 Q2 by R now. Again, R is the radius of the sphere and we know that both the spheres they are identical and therefore r is same what differs here is the charges which are which they are carrying we have two spheres and their surfaces are at different electric potentials so what happens when two points with different electric potentials are connected by a wire current starts flowing so current will flow from surface of higher potential to surface of lower potential in this case if q1 is positive the current will start flowing from sphere 1 to sphere 2 so in this way current will flow a current is nothing but charge which is being carried by this wire positive charge which is being carried by this wire and then it is transferred to the second sphere q2 and how, how long will this current flow the current will flow until both the spheres have the same charges some charge small q when is transferred from sphere 1 to sphere 2 so that charge on first sphere is q1 minus q and charge on second sphere will be q2 plus q because 
this second sphere is gaining the charge and when these two charges now are equal what will happen is if you write down the equation for potentials one once again they have the same radius so this r is same capital r is same and the charges are also same so v1 and v2 they will become same after the small charge q is transferred from first sphere to second sphere and when they have equal charges since their potential there is no potential difference now the current will stop flowing so that now we can find out a relation for this small q which is equal to q1 minus q2 divided by 2 let us now write down the final charge on both of the spheres say capital q it is either equal to q1 minus small q or q2 plus small q both of them will give us the same equation so i will consider q1 minus small q here therefore q is q1 minus small q is given by this equation q1 by 2 since we are subtracting this will become plus now q2 by 2 q therefore is equal to q1 plus q2 by 2 so here what we have found is a relation for the final charge on each of the sphere in terms of their in initial charges let's try to test this equation with a few examples so the equation q is equal to q1 plus q2 by 2 suppose this charge is say 5 and this is equal to 2 this definitely isn't the case with our problem because one of the charge is positive the other one is negative anyway we will consider these charges so what is q given by our equation it is 5 plus 2 by 2 which is equal to 3.5 so what will happen in this case is 1.5 coulomb of the charge will transfer from first sphere to second sphere so that charge on the first sphere becomes 3.5 coulomb and charge on the second sphere is also 3.5 coulomb so our equation is working well for this particular example let's now consider another example which is closer to the situation in our problem let's say q1 is equal to plus 5 and q2 is equal to minus 3 then according to our equation the final charge is q1 plus q2 divided by 2 so this is going to be equal to 5 minus 3 divided by 2 so this is equal to 1 so that what what this equation is telling us is after the charge transfer has taken place each of the sphere will be left with plus 1 unit of charge so if charge here is plus 5 coulomb and minus 3 coulomb what will happen is plus 4 coulomb of the charge is transferred from first sphere to second sphere so that this sphere is left with plus 1 coulomb and this sphere gains plus 4 and this is this already has minus 3 coulomb so this will also be at the same this will also have the same charge which is plus 1 coulomb so our equation is then working well what we have obtained is a relation for the final charge on each of the sphere in terms of the initial charges q1 plus q2 divided by 2 now we will answer this question why do we need a thin wire can you think about it the reason is if the wire is not thin enough if the wire has sufficient surface area some of the charge is retained by this wire and our equation in that case will not work it is necessary that the wire is thin enough that even if it carries some charge it is very small now we again use coulomb's law for the final state of the two spheres the two spheres are fixed in place and therefore they cannot move from their positions so we know that the charge final charge on the two sphere is q1 plus q2 by 2 and they are repelling each other now we can see that why they would repel each other because both of them now are carrying the same charge capital q and therefore coulomb's law gives us f2 which is now the 
repulsive force between the two spheres is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 q square by small r square we know that r is equal to 0.5 and now f2 is equal to plus 0 0.0360 newton and q2 then can be written as 4 pi epsilon 0 f2 into r square again in this equation on the left side we have q square which is unknown we don't know what is the final charge on both the spheres on the right hand side we have this term which can be found out if i plug in all the values here i can find out what is the value on right hand side but we won't do it in fact it is recommended for all the problems you write everything in terms of the equation and plug in the values only at the end when you have the final answer this is for the two reasons first one is that it saves time the second reason is you get more accurate answers because every time you write down value of each terms like this you will truncate some of the terms which are shown by the calculator and these errors will pile up as you consider more and more terms so it is always recommended that you get the final answers in terms of known values and then plug in those values at one go and find out the answer let's gather now all the equations that we have obtained in attempt to solve this problem the first equation was q1 into q2 is equal to 4 pi epsilon 0 f1 into r square in this equation q1 and q2 are unknown the initial charges on the two spheres f1 was the attractive force between them so it is minus 0.108 newton and r is distance between the centers of two sphere two spheres which is 0.5 meter the second equation that we obtained is q square is equal to 4 pi epsilon 0 f2 into r square in this equation this capital q is the value of the final charges on the two spheres and force now is repulsive force which is 0 0.0360 newton r doesn't change they are the two spheres are fixed in place and finally we also have relation between q1 and q2 such that q1 plus q2 by 2 is equal to q and now we want to solve these three equations let let's call this as equation 1 this as equation 2 and this say let's say is equation 3 so we will have to solve these three equations to obtain the solution to the problem what these equations are telling us is when these equations when all these three equations are satisfied those values of q1 and q2 are the solutions to our problem to solve the problem now let's first consider the second equation and let's write down the square root of that equation q is equal to 4 pi epsilon 0 into f2 into r and since we are taking square root this term is to be under the square root sign we now will write down q2 in terms of q1 by using the first equation so what we get is 4 pi epsilon 0 f1 into r square divided by q1 so what what i am trying to do here is i am trying to write q2 and capital Q in terms of Q1 so that we have one equation with one unknown Q1 and we can try to solve that equation let us now plug in this value of Q2 in this equation so therefore we can write Q1 plus 4 pi epsilon 0 f1 into r square by Q1 is equal to 2 into square root of 4 pi epsilon 0 f2 into r so now this is if you look at this equation now all the terms are known except this q1 so we can try to solve this equation in obtain value of q1 which we will do on next slide
let me call that this equation as equation number 4 now we want to use equation 4 and write down the equation in terms of q1 so what we get is q1 square plus 4 pi epsilon 0 f1 into r square is equal to 2 into square root of 4 pi epsilon 0 f2 into r into q1 now i'll rearrange this equation to write q1 square minus 2 into square root of 4 pi epsilon 0 f2 into r into q1 plus 4 pi epsilon 0 f1 into r square is equal to is equal to 0 now many of you must have already realize that this is nothing but a quadratic equation let's write this equation for this term which is 2 into square root of 4 pi epsilon 0 f2 into r and i'll write gamma for this term 4 pi epsilon 0 f1 into r square so if i use these values beta and alpha in the quadrat in the above equation what we get is q1 square what we get is q1 square minus beta into q1 plus gamma is equal to 0 now this is a quadratic equation it is of the form of ax square plus bx plus c is equal to 0 the only change is instead of x now the variable that we have is q1 which we can find out by solving the quadratic equation to find the roots of the quadratic equation and a is equal to 1 b is equal to minus beta and c is equal to gamma now we'll solve this quadratic equation on next slide let's rewrite the equation once again here it's q1 square minus beta q1 plus gamma is equal to 0 where beta is 2 into square root of 4 pi epsilon 0 f2 into r with f2 equal to 0 0.0360 newton and r is equal to 0.5 meter gamma is equal to 4 pi epsilon 0 f1 into r square with f1 is equal to minus 0 0.108 newton and r is same it is 0 0.5 centimeter now let's find out the values of beta and gamma here when you plug in values of all the constants the value of beta turns out to be equal to 2.001 into 10 to the power minus 6 I am not writing dimension dimensions here gamma is equal to minus 3.004 into 10 to the power minus 12 now we can find out the roots of this quadratic equation the roots are given by q1 is equal to beta plus or minus square root of beta square plus or minus 4 gamma divided by 2 but just keep in mind that gamma is negative it is with a minus sign here it is because the force f1 which is there in that term of gamma is negative so when you find out the values of the roots there will be of course two roots one root is obtained when you consider the positive sign which turns out to be equal to 3 into 10 to the power minus 6 coulombs or I, we can write this q1 as 3 micro coulomb similarly the second root which i'll write as q1 prime this is equal to minus 1 into 10 to the power minus 6 coulomb or this can be written as minus 1 micro coulomb now these are the possible values which can be there on the first pair 
it can be either plus 3 micro microcoulomb or it can be minus 1 microcoulomb there is no way we can find out which charge is actually there on the first pair but then this ambiguity brings one benefit with it the benefit is now now if you plug in the value of q1 to find out the q2 what you will observe is if you consider value of q1 to be equal to 3 coulomb then q2 will turn out to be minus 1 coulomb and q if you consider the value of minus 1 coulomb for q1 q2 prime will turn out to be equal to plus 3 coulomb so now let's summarize the solution to our problem the solution is there are these two spheres identical conducting spheres one is with charge q1 the other is with charge q2 for us there is no way we can find out which of them is positive and which is negative had we started by considering that the first sphere has charge q2 and second sphere has charge q1 we would have obtained the same relation all we can tell about the charges about the initial charges is one of the sphere has charge which is equal to plus 3 micro coulomb and the other sphere in that case will have charge which is given by minus 1 coulomb so this is the solution for this problem now what is the message given by this equation what we solve was a problem from electrostatic and as we started solving the problem the quadratic equation automatically emerged and when we solved it we have to obtain the roots to get the solution of the problem now this happens many times many times quadratic equation will automatically emerge if the variable in which the quadratic equation written is written has physical existence then the solutions or the roots of the quadratic equation are always real they cannot be complex but that is not the whole story that there, there are so many other quadratic equations which will have complex root where you will need the concept of i is equal to square root of minus 1 and then the roots will be of this form a plus i into b where a and b both are re both are real numbers complex numbers are very important it is for two reasons the one is they are a very important tool in mathematics there can be so many things which wouldn't be possible without complex number the second reason is we say that these numbers are imaginary but when it comes to complex numbers you get something called as wave function which is generally written in written as psi so these wave functions are always complex numbers and they do represent some kind of reality we have to manipulate this wave function to get the physical meaning out of the wave function this is the summary we considered a problem from electrostatic where the quadratic equation emerged automatically and in order to solve the problem we have to first get the roots of the quadratic equation which we did we will stop here it has been a long lecture in next lecture we will see a few terms associated with complex numbers thank you for watching the video